Rampage. Hey guys, this is Whisper, coming at you again with another IO commentary video. This one is very focused. Uh, this video is going to be about my item build. The, uh, the items that I build on IO in 95% of my games. This is a build that I talked about briefly in my How to Play IO in 7.07 video. But at that time, I had only played maybe 20 games of IO, and now I've played closer to 200 games of IO since the patch has come out. So I'm far more familiar with the nuances of this build, what makes it work, where its downfalls are, and ultimately, why it's the build that I pick. Uh, why it's the build that I play in 95% of my games, and why it, why it works. Uh, so I want to go into a lot more detail about the nuances of the individual items, how they work together, and why this is a build that you at home should be playing with as a support IO. Um, I have a very high number of kills this game, and I hope that this build and the things that I'm talking about helps to illustrate why that is possible on what is arguably a greedy position for su support player. Uh, a little bit of setup for the game, uh, I am laning with a Juggernaut, and we are in safe lane against a Slardar and a Marana. I'm sure Marana will leave to go roam at some point, I imagine that she's staying right now for levels, she can level up a little bit before she leaves. Um, and I want to talk about why my items are the items that, that I pick. And I'm going to start with my opening items. Uh, just a quick list, I have Tangos, I have two Salves, a Clarity, and I've also bought the Courier. The reason behind why I've picked these items is relatively self-explanatory. Um, if you don't go for a Bottle Rush build, and by that I mean you spend your first 650 gold on a bottle. You can buy it from the side shop now. Or not the side shop, yeah, this, this, the secret shop is what I mean to say. Uh, you can buy it from either your secret shop or the enemy's secret shop. And if you don't buy any opening items, uh, you can get it within 30 seconds before the first creep waves even meet. And that is a really fantastic way to give early HP regen and all that jazz. If you don't do that, you need items in order to maintain early HP regen of your team. You and your teammate. Uh, and this works, these items work either for what I build, which is a soul ring build. I tend to avoid bottle, it's a conversation for a different day. It's more of a comfort thing than it is like bottle is bad. I don't think bottle is bad whatsoever. Uh, I just feel more comfortable playing with different items. But even if you are building bottle build, and you don't like my, my items, you think what I'm playing with is crap, these are very good starting opening items to keep you and your teammate alive. The One of the things that is a huge benefit to IO that no other player in all of Dota can talk about is IO can heal two people at once. He can heal himself, and he can heal his, his lane partner, his tether partner. And that's really important, because what it means is, as you can see here, I'm, I'm trying to harass very, very heavily. And I'm totally okay with taking harassment back. If Marana lands some arrows on me, if Slardar gets a stun off on me, that's all totally fine. Because when I use my HP regen, I can heal up Juggernaut as well. And I can leverage my lost health in order to create a benefit for another player. And in, or in order to do that, I need consumable regen. I need some sort of regen, but in this case, con consumable. And that applies to every item in my opening build. Tangos, right? Very standard item. Slow regen that's going to help keep myself alive as well as Juggernaut. Fill us back up when we need it. Healing salves are an even more strong version of that. You get to uh, regen yourself very rapidly, and if you tether to somebody else, you're regening them even more rapidly. Uh, even in fight scenarios. I think a lot of people talk about how items that don't items that stop functioning when you attack or are attacked like a healing salve or a tranquil boots they have this picture in their mind that, that that as soon as you get into a combat scenario that just doesn't work anymore because people are are are, are going to be hitting you and the reality is that, that that's a very naive statement that doesn't make a lot of sense if juggernaut is at one quarter health and the whole team wants juggernaut dead 
They're not going to split half the team to attack me and half the team to attack Juggernaut. Everyone is going to attack Juggernaut to try and shut him down. And what that means is that that buys IO time to tether to Juggernaut, heal through salves or whatever other items he has, Tranquil Boots, etc., and overcharge, and keep that kid alive. And the idea behind having opening salves is that there are many, many times where I've been able to turn early ganks, early fight interactions in our favor by healing the ganks player up to almost full health as all three players focus onto Juggernaut, I'm in the background salving, healing, keeping him alive, and at some point they realize they've overcommitted, and that's where we can start, that's where we can get a kill. And being able to turn those early ganks, those early fight interactions in, in our favor begins the snowball process that is winning a Dota 2 game. So I always argue for opening salves. One is a definite, two is my personal choice. Um, but opening salves, super Im important. And the same goes for clarities and for tangos too. You know, being able to keep up the enemies, as, or sorry, the enemies, your allies, uh, HP and MP regen, as well as your own, is super important for maintenance in the early game. Uh, the next item that I have purchased is Soul Ring. Uh, Soul Ring is sort of my answer to bottle. Uh, it's uh, an item that gives way more MP regen than bottle ever could. The amount of MP that comes out of Soul Ring is not repeatable by a bottle. No matter how many, like, with a standard number of, of charges. If you got three charges every two minutes, you couldn't do it. And the idea here is that Soul Ring gives a lot of really nice stats. Now that 7.07 .07 has changed, it gives plus six strength, which is fantastic for IO on multiple levels. It gives you additional damage, additional HP. It increases the amount of HP regen you gain from all sources, which is something we're going to talk about in a moment. And it also increases your status resistance, which is the amount of time that things like uh, silences and uh, slows will affect you. Um, just an example, by the way, of how functional these salves are. Uh, you can see me running away from this DD Skywrath, desperately trying to save my own life. And I'm actually able to heal myself up enough in between his casts using, admittedly, a lot of money in salves to keep myself alive. And here, as a group, we can watch me make the worst play I make all game. I tether in to help my Juggernaut kill this Skyrath. I, I run past a completely full shrine in the process, of which just a mere two seconds would have saved my, saved my life. I soul ring myself, uh, which decreases my HP so I can cast spirits, and then I overcharge the minute I get there, which reduces my HP by even more. Um, so that was a little bit embarrassing, not gonna lie, but I will also say that that is the only time I die all game, so I can promise you it's only gonna get better from here. Um, Soul Ring is really fantastic for being able to maintain your own mana, as well as increase the mana of your lane partner. Uh, Juggernaut doesn't necessarily have long cool, like short cooldowns that would benefit from a big mana boost, you know, um, his spin and his healing ward have relatively high cooldowns. Um, but it's something that I feel comfortable with. I think it has more game impact as the game continues. The bonus from strength and the plus two HP regen that come on Soul Ring are very, very nice passive bonuses that Bottle doesn't give you any passive bonuses. And it makes you not reliant on runes. If you get boxed out of a rune when you have Bottle, uh, you have a dead item in your inventory for two minutes. It doesn't give you anything passive, it gives you nothing to work with. So personally, I prefer Soul Ring. Um, the next item that I'm building is Tranquil Boots for pretty self-explanatory reasons. Uh, Soul Ring hurts. Every time you activate Soul Ring, you are losing 150 HP and you're gaining 150 MP. So you need some sort of replacement to the early HP region that Bottle would have given you had you gone Bottle. And my personal choice is Tranquil Boots. Tranquil Boots is incredibly strong, uh, normally in that it gives you a very high amount of HP regen, but secondarily, because of the way 7.07 .07 has changed HP regen, it gives you even more. And let me explain what I mean by that. 
As of 7.07, .07, there have been changes to the way that HP and MP regen are calculated. The HP regen that you gain is modified by a multiplier according to the number, the amount of strength that you have. The more strength your hero has, the more HP regen you will gain. And that applies to all heroes in all scenarios, not just IO. And the same works for MP, MP regen. The more intelligence you have, the more MP regen you will gain, regardless of uh, hero. And this doesn't even matter if you have items in your inventory that have strength or intelligence, because every hero has a base stat of strength and intelligence that increases as the game progresses. So not only is Tranquil Boots giving a normally a quite high amount of uh, HP regen, but as you gain more strength as the game builds, you will gain more and more and more and more HP regen. Not just from Tranquil Boots, but from every other item that you have as well. So it really gives you a... Uh, it's a very strong way to maintain your HP regen in a non- rune reliant method uh, that actually scales as the game continues. Uh, it's a really strong item. Uh, it functions in those fight scenarios like I mentioned earlier. All you have to do is make sure that you're not going, um, not getting attacked by enemy players and, and positioning yourself properly. Um, how I survived that Murata fight, I have no idea. Um, but the idea is that Tranquil Boots is a really nice item that I think is overlooked by a lot of players. Um, the next item that I'm building is a magic wand. Um, again, a relatively standard IO item. Um, it gives you the ability to burst heal somebody, what I would personally call like a flash heal. You hit one button, you gain X amount of health, and the person who you're tethered to gains one and a half times X amount of health. Uh, and that's a really fantastic way to quickly and rapidly heal people who need it um, in team fights as well as yourself. Uh, it also gives you HP regen as of 7.07, .07, which stacks into everything else that I've talked about so far. It also gives you a minor stat boost, which is really nice. And ultimately, if you build a lot of charges up on a magic wand, it can act with the same strength as a mechanism if you use it through tether onto another player. It's a very, very strong item that some people don't want to build or, or don't like to build. I've heard of multiple IO players, casual IO players, not not high level, saying that they don't like to build stick because they don't think they're going to hit it on time or they just don't like the functionality of the item. I absolutely think that is an error in judgment and that you should be getting stick. It is such a powerful item, not just in this meta, but on IO specifically. Very, very powerful. Uh, the next item that I'm building is Urn of Shadows. Urn of Shadows is arguably more powerful than Wand. It is, I think Io is the best hero in the game to carry an Urn of Shadows. Better than a Spirit Breaker, better than a Huskar, better than anything. For a reason I've basically already already talked about. When Io heals himself through uh, Urn of Shadows, he heals two players, not just one player. And that's really important and can have a lot of impact in team fights. Uh, Urn is a very powerful healing spell. It also it is a great damage spell. And the range on Urn of Shadows is something not to be forgotten about. Uh, many a time I have been able to kill players who are running away with 5% health from a battle only because the range of Urn of Shadows is like a million billion miles long. And you're able to hit players who you couldn't hit with any other spell and physical damage carries certainly couldn't even get close to. And you're able to finish off kills, kills the... the that way. Not to mention the stats that come in the item. It gives a boost to your MP regen, which is very, very nice. It gives a boost to your armor, which IO desperately needs. Um, it's just a really fantastic item all around, and I would suggest every IO player gets this item. If you don't want to go Tranquil Boots, if you don't want to go Soul Ring, that's up to, that's up to you. You know, that you're going to play Bottle and Arcane Boots, so be it. But you have to have Urn, and you have to have Magic Wand. I absolutely guarantee that those items are the most important for IO. Um, as of right now, I would call these items that I've talked about my core IO items. Um, 
almost if you're gonna this is this is if you want to play with soul ring this is what you get regardless of what enemy heroes are on the team regardless of anything else of what the strengths that you have to play to the weaknesses you have to exploit these four items soul ring tranquil boots magic wand urn of shadows those are the four items that those are your core set you can build different items after this you can start to think about what you need to build to win the game um Honestly, 95% of the time, I end up building the same items after this because they work in so many different scenarios. But, as a rule of thumb, this is the idea that you want to build your core, and from your core you begin to think about, situationally, what do I need? Um, but these four items are definitely my core. Next, what I'm going to be building into is what I consider to be the new meta of IO is Veil of Discord. Veil of Discord uh, gives everything that IO needs in one beautiful package, and it's something I think is overlooked by a lot of people. Back before 7.07 .07 came out, before the changes to IO's talent tree, the level 10 talent used to be that you could pick plus 6 armor or plus 10 magic, 10% 10 magic resistance. And that plus 6 armor is a really big deal because Io has inherently such low armor. Now that the talents have changed, you need to focus on getting your armor from your items rather than your talents. Before you could skip armor items and rush right into other items because you already had uh, armor coming from your talents, but that's totally changed now. Enter Veil of Discord. Veil of Discord gives you, oh conveniently, plus 6 armor, the exact amount that it would give you at the level 10 talent back in 7.06. Not only does it give you plus 6 armor, it gives you a host of really nice stats to areas that you need them. It gives you plus 6 agility and plus 6 strength, which is nice, those are, those are nice stats, nothing to write home about, but you know, it's, it's like good times. But it also gives you 14 intelligence. That is a shit ton of intelligence. That is... Io has a very, very small mana pool that you are basically keeping afloat by having this soul ring. That you're sacrificing HP in order to not use up your very low amount of MP. Being able to have a Veil of Discord really increases the amount that you're able to play with spirits, the amount of pressure you can take off of soul ring. Uh, and on top of all of this, it co Veil of Discord combos very, very well with your level 15 talent, which is plus 90 spirits damage. And a quick math lesson for people who don't know, spirits hits for 100 damage per orb. So plus 90 spirits damage is almost double damage for your spirits. It's an incredibly strong boost to your spirits damage at a very, at a relatively low level that, oh by the way, you're boosting an additional 25% by activating the debuff that comes with Veil of Discord. So by having Veil of Discord done before level 15, once you hit 15, you are able to explode in damage onto enemy players and really start leveraging the damage that Io can do. Um, it's a really fantastic item. Oh, I also forgot to mention it includes plus 5 HP regen, which is more regen for your tether, more functionality to allow you to heal other players, and really keeps you going. Um, it is absolutely such a strong item in so many scenarios, and adapts to so many different game situations because it's so well-rounded. I would basically not pick this item up if I wasn't going to go plus 90 spirit damage. If I was going to go uh, for a uh, tether agonims game, I would start building different items in order to compensate for different things. But even in that scenario, the base stats from this still work to keep IO alive, to keep other people alive. Um, it's a really fantastic item. Quick side note as this team fight breaks out, if you rewind about 5 seconds, you'll see that Kotal had just drained Juggernaut's mana entirely, all the way down to zero, and I was able to tether and soul ring him from across the map to refill his mana to full in the midst of a team fight. Something that you could not do with a bottle. Or even if you could do with a bottle, it would take seven and a half seconds of time to use all three bottle charges to refill, and it's not something you can do instantaneously.
even you can see here I've just hit level fi just hit level 15 and now my spirits are greatly heavily boosted in damage but I was still able to use the debuff of Veil of Discord in that team fight which increased the damage from many different players on my team the damage that comes from Lich uh, the uh, actually let's hold on because I really want to highlight this that Skyrath was their mid player I just took out their mid player with eight spirits orbs and the Veil of Discord debuff. Um, this is me trying to highlight to you guys how incredibly strong just this one item is to an IO player. That item plus the level 15 talent. Very, very high damage impact. Um, I forget what I was talking about prior because I really wanted to focus on that point. Um, but yeah, I think it's such a fantastic way to... Uh, such a multifaceted item that really helps IO in a lot of different ways. The next item that I'm buying is Yule Scepter. Yule Scepter is, again, an incredibly multifaceted item that works because in so many different scenarios, you can use it in so many different ways. In 7.06, again, we're going back to the old talents. At level 15, there was a talent that gave you plus 10 mana regen. There was a second talent about strength, it sucked, you don't even need to know what it was, because plus 10 mana regen was arguably one of the strongest talents in the game. That would fix your mana regen for the rest of the game. You could sell Soul Ring, you could buy no other mana regen items, and you would be totally fine, because plus 10 mana regen was strong enough to keep you going the whole time. Uh, now that the talents have changed, you need to focus on getting MP regen from your items, like you would with armor at level 10. And what you do is you go for Yule Scepter. Yule Scepter has... I'm going to take a good five minutes to talk about, about this item, because I think it's so aggressively overlooked for IO players. Uh, Yule Scepter is one of the top five MP regen per gold spent items in the game. I think it's behind Infused Raindrops and Urn of Shadows and maybe one other item and it's there. It is it is an incredibly powerful H MP regen tool for a very for a relatively low amount of gold. So it keeps your mana full, keeps you casting spirits, allows you to overcharge more aggressively in the end game. That's what you want. It also gives you a boost to your total intelligence, which increases your, your mana pool even further. Uh, generally helps with the effort to regen mana. This is also great. And it also gives you plus 40 move speed, which is quite a lot. That's the same as like having an additional set of brown boots in your inventory. Uh, being able to move faster on the map, reposition yourself, uh, having that extra move speed definitely helps. But the thing that gets overlooked, and I think the greatest multifunctional purpose of New Scepter, is the Cyclone. And Cyclone can be used in a variety of different ways that I wanted to chat about now. Um, it has both defensive and offensive uses. We'll start with offensive, because I think they're a, a bit shorter. Offensively, with a Yule Scepter, you can set people up for ganks. You can buy your, uh, your allies two and a half seconds of time to get their stuns off of cooldown, to get close enough and time their stuns as he comes out of, out of, out of the Cyclone. And it's even something you yourself can use if you charge into an, an enemy player, use all of your spirits, but you have to wait a few more seconds to cast your spirits a second time, buy time by hitting them with a Yule Scepter until your stuff comes off of, off of cooldown. But ultimately, the defensive uses of Yule Scepter are enormous. I'm going to try and list them all off right now. You can, if you are being chased by an enemy hero, you can Yule Scepter them to buy yourself time to escape. If you have relocated into a bad position, you can buy two and a half seconds of time to keep yourself alive before you return to your original position. If you are about to be hit with a long-range stun or spell, uh, in this case, the Skyrath Q, the stun from Wraith King, an arrow from Marana, being able to cyclone yourself will block that incoming damage. 
On top of that, Yule Scepter'ing yourself dispels enemy debuffs from you. So if you were silenced by Skyrath, if you were mana drained from Kotal, Yule Scepter'ing yourself would, would remove all of those debuffs from you. I mean, if we're even talking about it, it would block the ultimate from Slardar from being able to, to track you. It is such a multifunctional item that has so many different uses. The only reason I never picked it up before was because you didn't need the MP regen, and that's its main function, is to give you MP regen. But I know very high, very high level IO players that would pick this up before 7.07 .07 came out, and I thought, you know, it had some uses, but it wasn't that important. But now that 7.07 .07 is here, it's such a strong item, it cannot be overlooked. One more thing to mention, by the way, on its functions, is that it can also dispel other players' buffs. A uh, great example of this is against Monkey King. If Monkey King has gotten four hits off on somebody and he has Jingu ma uh, Mastery activated, if you Yule Scepter him, he loses that buff. He no longer gains HP from his hits, he no longer has bonus damage, it's a really fantastic item that can be used in a lot of different ways. It also blocks stuff like Kunkka's X marks the spot. If you're being dragged back to your position from Kunkka, if you Yule Scepter yourself, you block the return, with the drag back from the X. Um, it's a really important item that should not be overlooked. The next item that I'm buying combos very well with Yule Scepter, and that is Spirit Vessel, the upgrade to Urn of Shadows. Uh, this, long story short, just makes Urn of Shadows stronger. The healing does more healing, the damage does more damage, um, and it also helps when you are damaging somebody else with it, it decreases the amount of HP regen they gain by 70%. This has a lot of functionality with very specific heroes who heal themselves in team fights, like Death Prophet or Huskar, Omni Knight, even onto other IO players. Um, but, it also gives you uh, some stats, such as plus 250 HP, which is always nice for a weak support player, and it also gives you plus 30 move speed, which stacks on top of the 40 uh, move speed from Dual Scepter, which means between Dual Scepter and Spirit Vessel, Io is gaining plus 70 move speed. That is a lot of goddamn speed, guys. Like, we need to talk about this, because this is something I did not touch on in my first video. The amount of move speed that Io has from Tranquil and inactive Tranquil boots, like one that is off of cooldown, you just attack somebody, you're moving at 430 units of move, of move speed. When Tranquil boots is active, you have 455 move speed. When you are tethered to somebody, and you are gaining plus 16% move speed, you are almost 500 units of move speed. When you get a haste rune, like those red runes that you move at maximum speed, maximum speed is 550. You are almost hasted the entire game just from having these two items and tether. It is such a powerful and multifunctional combination because speed is so underestimated in a support player. The ability to reposition yourself to not take incoming attacks, the ability to constantly run away from enemy heroes, stay behind your, your teammates, and chase enemy heroes down. Uh, as we see in this Kotal gank, I actually can catch up to Kotal and finish him if that goddamn asshole hadn't run into the fountain and then I missed one of my orbs. I really hate that I didn't that I didn't kill him. Uh, but in that scenario, I'm still able to chase down very fast players and finish them off with my long range spill spells such as spirits and er and sp and spirit vessel. Uh, the amount of functionality that comes from like having that amount of speed is really overlooked, especially in 7.07, .07, where agility heroes gain move speed bonuses based on the amount of agility they have. So suddenly, really high damage agility heroes that are, were killing you anyway are now killing you and they're way faster. So being able to have the move speed to play against those very, very fast heroes is super important for uh, being able to survive. Helping other people survive, chasing down, finishing off kills, which gets you more gold, which helps you build more items, etc, etc, etc. 
I would argue that these, this, what you guys see in my inventory right now, this is quote-unquote Whisper's IO build. These are the items that I build in the vast majority of my games. I think one of the major differences is that if somebody else had built Spirit, or if somebody else had an Urn of Shadows as well, I might not put my money in, into Spirit Vessel because I wouldn't have as many charges to play with. Um, but this, this is it. This is my build that I run in easily 90% of my games. And I think it is multifunctional. It's very, very powerful. You're still able to keep other players alive in a support role function while being able to have very high damage Im impact and maneuverability to set up enemy kills in order to get enemy kills yourself as well as keep the team alive. Uh, now we have to think about the end game. What items are really going to be required to win the end game? What situationally do I have to play to the advantage of on my team? What do I have to uh, worry about on their team? And in this game, we basically won. Uh, I think uh, we have a couple of... I think my, my options here are pretty open. Uh, and I'm going to put on, on the screen the items that I'm currently playing around with as my end game items. I think these will evolve over time. Uh, they're in no particular order. Um, but they're definitely important items that can help you crush out the end game. Uh, the first and probably the most relatable is Heart of Tarrasque. Heart of Tarrasque is a really important um, M HP regen item that I have been using since before 7.07 .07 ever came out. It gives you an incredibly high amount of HP regen that is something not to be overlooked. Uh, if you have one important carry who is winning your whole game for you, and if that guy dies, you can push and win, you absolutely want to get a heart, a heart, a heart of Tarrasque. Um, it gives an it, it regens IO for hundreds, hundreds of HP per second, which through Tether is one and a half times hundreds for your carry, your lane partner, whoever. And being able to support pushes in this way, being able to make sure that uh, players can stay alive, uh, even in the midst of a huge team fight, uh, is going to win you the game. Absolutely. I think one of the downsides, well, maybe downside is the wrong word, but one of the big changes that has occurred in 7.07 .07 is that at level 25, Io has a very strong HP regen talent. He gets plus 50 HP regen, which in actuality, because of the way strength works, is more like plus 75, plus 80 HP regen. And what that means is that having a really strong end-game healing item is no longer as important as before, because now you can cover some of your HP regen from your talents. And what that means is it doesn't make Heart of Tarrasque a worse item, but it makes it a less required item. You can probably get, get away with getting other items. Uh, another example of this is Desolator. Um, at level 20, Io has a talent that says every time the person he's tethered to attacks, you attack. And you can see that here, actually, that's how we're pushing this tower. Every time that um, the person who I'm tethered to is attacking, I'm attacking, on top of my normal attack pattern. If you get Desolator, uh, this is a really multifunctional item that works in both a team fight as well as a pushing scenario to help you win the game. Um, arguably, if you're level 20 and the game is not basically won, you're going to need some help pushing. That's just, in 90% of games, I think that's a fair statement. So being able to get Desolator is going to help strip the armor from both buildings as well as enemies. Um, in both a team fight scenario where you're tethered to somebody and they're attacking, as well as a pushing scenario when you're tethered to someone and they're attacking a building, Having that additional armor strip and plus 50 damage is going to really help the Io become a more important pushing uh, player. It's really going to help him focus on getting rid of ob objectives, killing important players, things like that. Um, another endgame item option is Octarine Core. This runs on a similar idea that you don't necessarily need Heart of Tarrasque once you're level 25 in order to make sure that you're healing people. Octarine Core gives you 25% spell, spell lifesteal, 
which is very powerful mixed with your very high damage spirits that are boosted again through Veil of Discord. So you're, you're, you're healing quite a bit of health through the damage you do through spirits, but you're also reducing all of your cooldowns. And Io is made of cooldowns. Every single one of his spells, including Overcharge, has a cooldown, and every single one of his items, especially in this build, has a cooldown. So being able to cut all of those cooldowns by 25% per could have some really heavy endgame impact. Think about a really fast regen, a, a really fast regen uh, relocate that only that every 50 seconds you can use it, or a heart of Tarask that uh, turns back on after six seconds instead of eight seconds. Uh, things like this are really important, and because you don't necessarily need that very strong HP regen kick in, in at the end game, uh, I think this is something that really, really works. Um, I'm glad you guys watched this game. Uh, I end up going 19, 1, and 16 as a support player. And I think the real interesting thing to look at right now is not my number of kills, but my total damage. I have 35,000 damage, more than double of any other player in the game, as you guys saw, a support IO player. I let Juggernaut get all of those last hits, I wasn't demanding farm, I might have cleared a stack or two, and admittedly I didn't buy many wards, but the ability for this build to output an insane amount of damage and survive in the meantime, as well as doing... 18,000 healing? Is that what that says? 14,000 healing? That is really important to, uh, to try and show you guys the multifaceted nature of this build. Even as a support player, you're able to heal other players, keep them alive, save their butts, but also increase the damage output of yourself and your team in order to help get kills, get kills yourself, really have a very heavy game impact. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. I hope that what I've said makes a lot of sense. And uh, one more ma one more thing, you can find this build in Dota. Uh, this is a build that I have made myself and published. It's called the 2500 plus Commend IO build. Uh, and if you play IO and scroll through the guides, you should be able to find it. Uh, I hope that you guys play it and find it useful. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you guys in the comment sections and in-game soon. Alright, bye-bye.